welcome to the video my friends today we're going to take a look at biomutant developed by experiment 101 and published by thq nordic biomutant is a single player open world post apocalyptic kung fu fable rpg with a unique martial arts style combat system allowing you to mix melee shooting and mutant ability action as it is written on steam straight out of the gate with biomutant i feel that it's aimed at a younger audience i think it's 12 plus here in the uk mainly due to the game dialogue and certain creature names like Moomzy and Popsy for your parents and the Looper Looper as the main bad guy. As for the story or a basic summary, you are some kind of mutated rodent a good time after the human race has polluted themselves out of existence and your role is to try and unite all of the tribes around the land to defend against the world eaters. I must have streamed about the first three hours of Biomutant over on my Twitch channel and most of that if not all was a pretty much the tutorial uh, I didn't even get to the open world to be honest during my stream that was after recording some of this footage that I've got in the background here and the world is very different it's beautiful in, in a different way I think it's very stylized in its own way with the creatures uh, the mini bosses and stuff dotted about all the collectibles there's shrines you can activate to gather skill points. Yes, of course, this is an RPG, so you have a full-fledged skill point system where you can learn new attack moves with certain weapons that you're maybe using, single-handed bladed weapons, uh, blunt weapons, two-handed, shotguns, pistols, rifles, or learn new magical abilities with your side points, as well as improve your resistances to different areas around the world, like heat, cold, and radiation. You are going to want to bump some of these resistances up to get into certain areas for epic loots. As for looting and the loot around the world, there is plenty of it and it seems to be a big part of Biomutant. Searching all kinds of nooks and crannies, cupboards, boots of cars, caves, the basements of houses, and the odd dungeon that you have to run and kill a mini boss. There is a lot of different types of loot with the usual common epic legendary tier systems to them as well as their magical or electrical elemental abilities. You can also modify and create your own equipment and loot completely from scratch with parts you've scavenged together uh, from scrap around the world. I created this killer electrified kind of axe hammer with a katana sword which was like super duper high level and did a huge amount of damage and I'm killing creatures levels higher than me uh, just with a couple of wax just super easy so it's not particularly a difficult game especially if you can find the epic loot as for the combat it seems to be an area that's had the most time put into it it does feel really rewarding there is a parry system a dodge system as well as special moves that you can unlock as I've mentioned with different key prompts and combinations that you can do to do even more powerful special moves as well as when you've done enough damage you can go into like a super ninja mode and do even more damage with different move sets from what you'd have normally this is very much designed around a controller gameplay i feel though i was using keyboard and mouse and had no issues whatsoever i managed to pick up a buttload of quests and missions i never really did many of them as i just found that i was exploring the world a lot more i'd see something in the distance and be wanting to check that out and get sidetracked all the time and never actually did 99% of the missions that I picked up. I suppose that's a good testament to how good the world actually is though. I did find a load of mounts as well on my way which allowed me to get around the world a lot quicker. You can find these just roaming the fields or you can buy them from stables. I found this weird black with glowing white eyes thing and not really a face uh, from a stable but there is loads you can get from fields. You just feed them a berry to tame them kind of thing later on in the game there are flying mounts i've only got about five hours into the game as of this review so i've not got hold of those just yet but the mounts i have got have helped me to get some of the collectibles that you do really need you gather resources from kind of totem poles made out of either metal rubber wood or whatever it is you may need which are your crafting resources to craft weapons and armor or upgrade them at the workbenches dotted around the map with all that said, I'll be totally honest with you, the reason why I picked up Biomutant or I wanted to take a look at it was just the world and the contrasting colours and the, the colour palette of the world and it just looked so attractive to me and different and unique, all the characters being furry and have that fur simulation on them and just totally different to anything I've seen really before. I don't know, it just kind of really caught my eye, everything, the combat just feels so nice, it looked good in the gameplay that we saw just before release. Uh, that I know this was delayed quite a while. I think 2018, this was first revealed uh, 
and then something happened and, and it didn't come out until obviously now. So I'm pretty, pretty impressed with it. I'm pretty pleased. As for the performance, I was running this at 1440p maximum settings. I didn't notice any frame timing issues whatsoever. 60 FPS most of the time in heavy action areas. It did dip to the mid to high 30s, 40 plus. So it doesn't run amazingly in performance. Again, comparing this to another game Days Gone, which was consistently 60 plus maximum settings, 1440p, even with the biggest horde, it just didn't, didn't alter anything. It just ran so good that that poor it's just amazing this definitely dropped though there is a lot of the uh, simulation going on so maybe that is what causes it but there's nothing that's like really noticeable so i'm pretty impressed with the performance overall so all in all i would probably have to give it an, a, a just above average as a as a whole package as a game and maybe a seven seven and a half uh it's not for everybody. It's the 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 uh, aimed at the younger audience uh, dialogue and the writing maybe and the names could put a lot of people off. I've seen a lot of people moan about the actual voice acting. It's a bit grating after a while. You can skip the dialogue, so you can just read and skip and read and skip and not have to listen to everything if you don't want to. But I've seen that being a big complaint. Uh, one of the voices is kind of grating. I will admit. And uh, you have the same voice actor the whole way through, kind of narrating the whole story for you and, and kind of translating what the NPCs are saying. So, yeah, it's, it's not going to be for everybody. Visually, yes, amazing. The art style, the creatures, uh, they're all very unique and it's kind of different to anything you would have seen before in a game and really stands out. I think it'd be a chill game to sit on the couch and play. There is a lot you can tinker with in the inventory and your character creation and things like that if you so wish. It has been a bit of a nice change from the norm for me, but I think if you're like me and into the more grounded, realistic kind of shooters, I've played Days Gone recently, which I thought was really amazing and um, realistic visuals and, and all that with the zombie apocalypse kind of thing. I loved that game and this for me isn't as good as Days Gone, though the world and the imagery, as I've said, is kind of jaw dropping at times. Yeah, it's all kind of subjective though, isn't it? What I like, you might not like. What you like, I might not like. Or we might just like it. I don't know what I'm talking about. I hope this bit of gameplay and talking about the game for a little bit has give you an idea of what I think Biomutant is. And if you think you might like giving it a little tickle. Oh, one more thing. As for the price, I'd say it probably wants to be a good £10-15 pounds cheaper, maybe. I paid £55 pounds for this. Yeah, THQ didn't send me a key, sadly. So I did pay for this myself. Um, I would say £40. I paid £55. So, yeah, £15 cheaper maybe game, I'd say. That's just that's just my opinion, though. Uh, it's got a great open world and combat, though. What are you saying, Falcon? I don't know. Subscribe for future videos, reviews, first impressions, first looks, all of the above. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the content and dislike if you didn't like the content. I love you all and I'll see you peeps next time. middle life.